do it today. First of all, we're to preach on the cross of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are to look to the cross for the answer to sin. We are to look to the cross as the way into heaven itself. We are to look to the cross. We are to preach salvation to the lost. And we're also to preach salvation to the church. Because the church needs to understand what we've got. The church needs to understand what the people on the outside need. The church needs to understand the people in the church aren't all saved. All right. Amen? Amen. I ain't pointing no fingers this morning, but not everybody in the church is saved. Amen. And God wants salvation preached inside the church. Another way we lift him up. Lift him up. Is we, lift, we live holy lives. Amen. God never gave us a way out. He said, you must be holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes, and without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's what the Bible tells me. So we don't have a little prayer we can pray, a little aisle we can walk, a little pool we can be dunked in, and say, I can do what I want to do. No, the Bible says because you're saved, you must live holy. And that's what it's all about. We show the world Jesus by our holy living. Yes, sir. We don't show the world. We don't show off by our holy living. Show the world. But we show the world who Jesus is yes, through the way we live. You, how many of y'all know what a hypocrite is? Raise your hand. Yeah, I think we all know what a hypocrite is. That's somebody who says they are one thing and acts another, right? Yes. The whole world sees the church as nothing but hypocrites. Amen? Amen. And the reason they do is because the church has denied holiness. The church has refused to live for Jesus Christ himself. The church has said, well, I don't have to do that no more, preacher. All I've got to do is join the church. That's all I've got to do. Where in the Word do you find that? Well, let me tell you where you take over and lift him up. Uh -uh. Is in your witness. Oh, Lord. In your witness. And that's not just going out and telling people about Jesus. All right. That's also about how you live again. Let's go back there this morning. Let's go back to the way we live our lives. Let's go back to the way the preacher lives his life. The preacher don't live holy. The preacher needs to live holy. The preacher needs to be a lot holier than what he is. But I want to know you, I want you to know something this morning. I don't have my own holiness. I have his holiness. Yeah. I have his righteousness. The only thing I've got to do is get under it. The only thing I've got to do is stand under it. I've got to get under what he is pouring out. Because he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, all flesh. my sons and my daughters. He talks about a prophesy. He talks about dreams and visions and power rising up in his church. Yes. That's what he talks about. He said, but the only way that's going to happen is if you get under my spirit. If you walk in my spirit. Preach, Mark. Lift him up. How else do we lift him up? How can we lift them up on a daily basis for our own selves for a little bit this morning? Let's forget about everybody else. Most of us are living so defeated, it's not even funny. Yes, it's sir. so sad that we're living such defeated lives. Let me tell you how we lift them up to ourselves. This is where Robert really makes the road, church. Come on, yeah. We lift them up in praise. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to stop what you're doing, lift your hand, say, God, I praise you. Yeah. Some of y'all are afraid. Hey, I tell you what, can y'all stretch? I yes. glass with the hands. Can y'all stress a little bit? Yeah. yeah see, so I ain't too many of y'all crippled up. Can't do that. But if you are, just lift a finger. It don't make much difference. God knows where your heart is. Sometimes you just need to stop, lift your hands, say, oh, Lord, I praise you. I guarantee you something. And you can take it to the bank. And BB&T will probably still charge you for it. Or I should have said that here. But I did anyway. Go ahead. Oh, I did anyway. Let me show you something. They're not the only ones like that. So I, I bet here's the ones that are messing with my mind today. That's my serpent this week. Bite me hard. Mm -hmm. If you will just, if you will praise him, joy will flood your soul. If you will lift him up, joy will flood your soul. You do it by praising him. And you do it through prayer. If you will get on your knees, I'll tell you right now, if you will get on your knees and stay on your knees before God, you will find that he will bring joy and peace to your life. You will find you have victory over the enemy. That will bite, that bitch you, that will serpent that bitch you. He'll have no power over you. If you look up to Jesus, he'll take care of it all. Yes, he will. Another thing you've got to do, and this is where we have problems. You've got to get him first place. Uh -oh. You've got to get him first place. It can't be your family. As much as I love my wife, it can't be her. It's got to be him. As much as I love you, it can't be you. It's got to be him. And I'm going to tell you, it has to be the same way with you. 
Yes, sir. If you are facing discouragement, you preach it. Where is Jesus in your life? If you are facing troubles, where is Jesus in your life? If He's not first, you're looking the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. If He's not priority, you're heading the wrong way. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm being as sweet and as precious and as, as nice and as kind as I can possibly be this morning. But I'm telling you right now, we're living, we, me, and you, all of us are living defeated life because He's not first in our life. We let something else get in the way. We are become hypocrites because we say we love Jesus, but we prove to the world that we don't. Not just the world, we prove to ourselves we don't. Tell the truth. And if you tell yourself you do, you're lying to yourself. Only you are deceived. No one else is deceived about your life. No one else is deceived about my life except for me. I'm the only one that's too close to it to see the truth. And you're the only one too close to yours to see the truth. Mm. Not only we have to give Him first place, we've got to give Him the glory. Yes, sir. We've got to praise Him. We've got to give Him glory. We've got to give Him all of the glory. All of it. There's a song that we do occasionally. It says, glory to your name. Yes, sir. Glory to your name. There at the cross was the blood applied. Yes, sir. Glory to your name. That's what it's all about, church. It's not about who you are. It's about whose you are. It's not about what you've done. It's about what you're going to do. It's about what you're going to stop doing. It's about what you're going to, how you're going to lift him up. When those bites, when those serpents, when those fiery serpents come your way, you've got to look up to Jesus because they're going to come. He never took away the serpents. They're still here biting us. They're still here causing us. See, the whole idea, though, was to cause us to look to Him. Yes, sir. To cause us to stop what we're doing and stop the things of life and say, yes, Jesus, you are the King of kings. Mm -hmm. You are the Lord of lords. Lord, it's you that I've got to look to. It's you that I've got to hold on to. That's why God sent that old Satan. We always wonder about that, don't we? We always wonder why in the world did God invent Satan or create Satan knowing what was going to happen. And it was to cause God's people to look to God. Because God knew that the mundane life that we would be living would not work. He needed something to draw men to Him because men had free will too. And men were going to turn their back on God sooner or later no matter what. Yes, sir. God knew what was going to happen. So He created a way that we could look unto Him and have eternal life. Thank you, Lord. That's why John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that He gave His only begotten Son. Thank you, Lord. whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. If we were bit, and all of us have been bit, and I got news for you, we are bit on a daily basis. Yes, sir. The enemy comes on a daily basis. Unless you stayed in bed all day, never budge, never woke up, but he still showed up because you didn't do something that day for God. Mm -hmm. You didn't wake up giving God the glory. Mm -hmm. You were too depressed and you stayed in bed. Yeah. You were too down and said, I can't face the world today. I've got news for you. You can face the world if you're looking up. You can face anything that comes your way if you're looking up. Church, we need to begin to look up right now. We need to begin to lift Him up in everything that we do, in every word that comes out of our mouth. It needs to be a way of lifting up Jesus Christ. And I, I got told something this week. What have I got to lose? Amen? Yes, sir. What have I got to lose? What have I got? I'm going to preach the word. We're going to praise God in this church. And we can praise Him as we come in. We can praise Him as we go out. Yes. We can praise Him while we're here. Amen. My word, if I were to walk in most of your all's vehicles right now, turn on your radio, what would I find? What would I find? without finding your CD players. I'm not going to. You can read easy. What would I find? Would I find stuff that lifts you up? Or would I find something that brings you down? See, it's your choice. It's your choice. When you walk out of here, are you going to lift them up? 